So, Mark, did you see this tweet from Paris, Las Vegas of a $608,000 poker win, a mega jackpot? And uh, there was something a little strange about the picture that they tweeted out. Yeah, they found their Microsoft uh, artwork in a notepad thing to to go squiggle in the black behind it looks so horrible i mean you can use ai to do this now the crazy thing is if you look below the table you see somebody's foot i'm guessing they wanted to block out the other people who were in the picture who they didn't have permission to tweet out but uh, yeah this is a, a terrible design job they deleted the tweet i hope the person isn't looking for a job yeah why not just like say hey everybody clear out we gotta take this photo real quick it, it shouldn't be that hard i'm sure everybody would just step to the side instead of <laughs> using ms paint This week, the monorail has been in the news because of some controversy. There were some social media accounts tweeting out that the monorail is approaching its end of life, which we know to be true because the LVCVA said back in 2020 when they bought it that they would run it through the end of the trains cycles because new trains would be about $220 million and they're not going to spend that. But then the LVCVA came out and said, no, the monorail is not going away yet, but soon. And yeah, it was a very confusing thing. The answer is the monorail will be running until the trains sort of are done. And then they say they're going to repurpose it, maybe turn it into an elevated skyway. I feel like that would cost a ton of money, too. And I mean, you know more about monorails than I do. You love them to death. How can they not find trains for these things when there's monorails everywhere? Is it just like an archaic system where the newer monorails are using different systems? And then they said they've made $20 million, which I take that as profit over the four and a half years. And they bought it for $24 million. So that means they have like somewhere in the 45 to $50 million range, $10 million a year. I feel like if you can buy new trains and get 30 years of life out of them, then it would be worth it. I don't know. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The main reason that LVCVA bought it was because of the exclusivity contract that said that there could be no other mass transit in the resort area. And they wanted Boring's Vegas Loop to be able to do that. So that's why they did it. Bombardier, I believe, made the trains. A little fun fact, the original system ran from MGM Grand to Bally's. It used retired Walt Disney World monorail trains, which are a different scope that you see in a lot of cities. So it's not that they couldn't build new ones, but the price would be a lot. That model isn't really made anymore. And uh, they're just not willing to invest in it remember the monorail has filed bankruptcy twice yeah i guess that makes sense just charge a little bit more maybe i don't know don't put them up on uh my vegas comps for the B bogo tickets i don't even know if they still do that but that was always my favorite redemption back in the day when i did all that and and we should probably dive into that in like a future show of the best my vegas stuff but yeah it just seems like there's monorails used so many places even in vegas like you see them the resorts are maintaining them and, and doing them so maybe the resorts would want to take this up as a way to connect between them two because i think it does help everyone on the monorail i don't know it'll be sad to see go i don't see how they do it into a walkway or anything like that i think that'll just be weird and kind of pie in the sky pipe dream yeah they did say the idea of building an elevated roadway there hasn't been engineered or they haven't figured out if it's possible but they think it is as you said that's still going to cost a lot of money maybe just build the trains. I don't know if they had ever built this thing out to the airport, extended it out of the Sphere station, the Mandalay Bay station, then it would be a different story. But it doesn't seem like there is the desire for that. So it will go away in a few years. When they bought it a couple of years ago, they said eight to 10 years of life left. So we're probably around five-ish years left before those trains go. And then who knows how long they can squeak out. Maybe we could finally get the gondolas we want, but on the backside, use that track space uh, to, to get some gondolas going back and forth. That'd be pretty cool. Speaking of gondolas, Mark, remember when you said there was no boat ride on the Strip? Everybody reminded us a couple of shows ago that the Venetian has the gondolas, even though you were talking more about an amusement style like Nile River, uh, that type of boat ride. But that just uh, hit in my head that uh, they told you that. So yes, there are boat rides left on the Strip. What won't be left on the Strip soon is Tropicana because we got confirmation that they're going to implode it. Controlled Demolition Incorporated said that they've been hired to get ready to implode the Tropicana. This is the same company that's imploded all the other Vegas casinos over the years. But then an asbestos report came out saying there's tons of asbestos all over the property. So there's a lot of work to be done, but it does seem like a implosion will be happening towards the end of this year if they can figure that all out. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to think of a specific, like most buildings you go into, you don't think even worry about it, but this was built so long ago. That's just everywhere. And it's crazy how much it was used and how often and basically in, in every area of construction. Uh, so that that's probably going to be a huge pain. Maybe it's just certain towers or certain floors that, that used it and things added later don't have it. But yeah, I couldn't imagine trying to rip all that out before you implode. It just seems like double work. Makes me think twice about wanting to go attend it too, just in case they yeah. miss something. Because that's where it's really dangerous is when it gets into dust form and 
when they blow up the building, all that could be exposed, but they say they're going to take care of it. There are a lot of regulations, but exciting, I guess, for people who love implosions. We didn't think this was going to happen because of the asbestos. So this was a new development. Another new development, the Neon Museum. Did you see that they lit up the Tropicana sign? They've owned this sign since 2010, and we've seen it at the Boneyard there, but it wasn't lit up, and they finally decided to add the neon to it. It's 80% original, so you'll notice that some of the lights are less bright than the others. That's the new stuff that has to sort of burn in, but uh, they restored it, and it looks great. Yeah, that's the most interesting part of all this, is I never realized with neon that it gets brighter over time because it quote-unquote burns in. Like I just figured the longer it goes, probably the dimmer it gets, so that's kind of cool little factoid. They also said they're still trying to figure out how to save the stained glass ceiling but the neon museum is working on that so it's good to see that it's in their hands i trust them a lot with uh with that and hopefully they find a good spot for it not just sitting outside but they can reconstruct it somewhere but they're still trying to figure out a plan for that so uh, hopefully we'll have more news on it soon an interesting story from vegas advantage this week came out talking about tito vouchers and when they expire a lot of people don't pay attention to that right because you cash out you go right to the thing you get your money but sometimes you forget you take it home and uh, it used to be like an industry standard about six months that these things were valid for. But Vegas Advantage did a great job breaking down which casinos and what their expiration dates are and found that uh, there's a few casinos that have gone down to 60 days and even a couple that have gone down to 30 days, meaning that you almost have to cash it in right away when Strat, Stage Door, Plaza are among the ones that are at 60 days and Treasure Island, Tropicana, which is now closed, Golden Nugget had 30 days. So uh, yeah, just keep that in mind when you're doing it. One last thing about it, they only keep 25% of the money. 75% goes to the state when these things expire and only about $22 million a year, which is a lot of money, but not a crazy amount of money uh, goes expired every single year. Yeah, I think a lot of that is probably those coins that they don't want to give out anymore and people just throw away the 25 cents or 50 cents. You know, and we talked about that. You can just donate it, which I would do that on the machine. A lot of machines will ask you if you want to donate the remainder change. Just do that versus it ending up in the, the hands of the casino and the state. I was surprised. I've never really paid attention to this. I don't play slots a ton. So I've never, and like you said, whenever I do, I just walk right over and cash it out immediately. I've never been one to stick it in my wallet and say, oh, I'll get to that later. But like sports bats and stuff, I, I believe that those are good for like a year, at least six months. So it's just kind of weird that you can hold that for a long time, even mail it in and they'll mail you payment for it. But these, they're, they treat differently. You think it'd be kind of the same realm for both. Yeah, and I think 30 days just isn't enough. You know, six months, at least it gives you a chance to come back on another trip. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. Some casinos do honor expired vouchers. They don't have to, but uh, they do. So that's an anecdotal sort of thing. But yeah, just keep that in mind. Look at that expiration date. Make sure you cash it in and just get your cash right away. Do your best to do that because you don't want to leave it to them. And, you know, they only get 25%. I guess it helps the state a little bit. But this isn't really a scheme to take your money. It's more they don't want to deal with the overhead of having those tickets on their books. I agree. It's an all an accounting thing. They just want to move on from it. So get your money while you can, you know, take care of it before you leave town. So one of your favorite lines from last show was talking about uh, how everybody loves a pink taco. Pink taco. And oh. so I'll talk about Rosa Mexicano at Planet Hollywood or at the Miracle Mile shops. I think this was the PBR bar, that sort of country bar there uh, closest to Harmon. And with the outdoor patio, they've turned it all into this pink Mexican restaurant, which has other locations. This isn't the only location, but we tried it the other day. Like I said on the last show, pink tortilla chips, really interesting decor in there. And the, the food was pretty good. I had the uh, cochinita pibil tacos, which is like pork belly tacos, really good. Also, the brisket enchiladas were tasty. You don't have an expansive menu, and it's a lot less of the more traditional things like fajitas and stuff aren't on the menu, but pretty good, expensive as you would expect. But one little nice thing is it's on the in-kind app. And for people who don't know what that is, it's a payment app that often has discounts. You sign up, you get 25 off 50, but they've also had credit card offers through American Express and City to buy credit at a discount. So that's another way to save some money there too. Expensive, you say. I mean, you got to pay for good pink tacos. <laughs> exactly. So you're looking at about 25 to $30 for three tacos. Two enchiladas are in the 30-ish range. They have steaks that are even higher. I think their chili relleno is something that they're famous for. That was like $26, although we didn't try it. Service was pretty good, but I love the restaurant. It looks beautiful, everything pink. They have some cool trees, skeletons everywhere. 
Uh, it's worth it just for that. And it's a huge space. And, you know, if it's the right time of year, sitting out on that patio, great people watching as people go up and down that Harmon pedestrian bridge. I looked at some photos. It looks really cool. And uh, I'm excited to check it out. And I mean, I'm not, I don't think I've ever seen pink tortilla chips anywhere. So right there's a novelty. Yeah. And if you know how to play the in-kind game, you can get a good discount on that. Uh, I'll put a link uh, down below for more information. As a reminder, we have our Patreon. $5 a month gets you access to our weekly after show. Lots of fun. Lots of Vegas. Patreon.com forward slash MTM Vegas for all the information. Thanks so much to everybody who supports us over there. Babyface. Did you know that Babyface is 65 years old? And he still looks, I mean, he lives up to this name. He looks so young and he just announced a quote unquote residency. I don't know if we should call it that at the Palms, May 25th and 26th, August 31st, September 1st, November 8th to the 9th at the Pearl. Uh, but yeah, he looks younger than ever. Yeah. He doesn't look like he's aged at all since the last time I cared about Babyface, which was like 1998. So he looks exactly the same as then. He's going to be performing some of his hit songs, but also he's a prolific songwriter and he's going to be performing some of the songs he's written written for other stars over the years so it should be an interesting concert and it's good to see palms getting a bigger name you know one from the past but i'm sure he has a lot of fans and he'll do pretty well with those limited dates that he has yeah it just goes in line with what we've been seeing with vegas duran duran u2 at the sphere all that stuff it's kind of like the heyday of throwback to you know 80s 90s type music and we're seeing it all across vegas even early 2000s it just seems kind of like that's what they're going for everywhere spoiler alert it's hurting the cirque shows and other things things so before we talk Cirque let's talk Moulin Rouge and one of our favorite things is going to happen one of those temporary casinos is going to open on that site for a day uh it needs to be approved by the county on April 18th but then when that happens it will open May 14th at 6 a.m and just be open for the day they'll have 16 machines there this is to keep the gaming license active Moulin Rouge one of the more famous casinos in Vegas history despite being open only about a year it was the first desegregated casino and I think we both agree that it had the best sign of any casino in the history of Las Vegas. Yes. First off, I need you to go there and film it because I want to see this thing in action. Uh, you know, we've talked about this a couple times now for different places. Secondly, I'm shocked that they still are keeping this thing going from a casino that's been closed for so long. And third, please open it back up with that sign. Take it from the boneyard. It's amazing. All the signs we've had over the years, all the beautiful neon, and that one still just yeah, is the best. And I'm so happy that the Neon Museum not only saved it, because it sat on that building, I remember, you know, 15 years ago, I think, driving by there, and you could see it from the freeway, and that building was decrepit, and the sign was still there. And so the fact that they saved it and restored it, it's so beautiful. That's worth visiting the Neon Boneyard just for that sign. Now you have Tropicana and so many others, though, the Hard Rock Guitar. Uh, just another shout out to them. But oh, man, I love that sign. And it's so interesting to see maybe someday this will be developed again. It's not in the best area. But, you know, you never know. Where was the Harlem Knights, whatever it's called now, uh, kind of in a similar area to that. So, you know, maybe there will be a resurgence down on uh, the west side. The Never Happening Night. Yeah, they changed the name. I forget what it was uh, without uh, much fanfare because we don't think it's ever going to happen. But we'll see. But Moulin Rouge, we'll check out that temporary casino next month. And then on to Cirque. We finally got some confirmation for changes happening at Mirage and Hard Rock. Starting with Love, Beatles Love is closing on July 7th, 2024, forever. It's not coming back at the end of it. They are going to do something with the theater space. We don't know if they're going to turn it into Hard Rock Live. This is right in the back of the property, so maybe they repurpose it for something else and build Hard Rock Live somewhere else. But uh, yeah, that's the first thing to go. Beatles Love, July 7th. You know, we saw Cirque sent out a memo to their people that was leaked and it made it sound like the whole property was shutting down, which was weird because I didn't get any of that vibe from the, the memo from Mirage talking about. It. They're like, we're just closing down the theater because that's the area we're going to be working on. And I thought it was cool that they have 75 million, I think they set aside for workers for compensation and all that type of stuff. So they got that all set up and at least people will be taken care of for a bit. Uh, because of the closure. Yeah, so it was a little confusing with mixed messages. They said that the whole property would close, but then Vital Vegas confirmed with Joe Lupo, who runs the place, that they aren't going to close everything all at once, but it will be done in sections, and it's going to start pretty quickly, August 1st, it sounds like. So we are going to finally get that transition to Hard Rock, and that means that we are going to lose some things, and it's going to be painful for a while as they renovate the towers, and it sounds like do significant changes to areas of the casinos, now, they have already started construction, if you don't remember. They took out all the animal habitats and have started working on some of those areas towards the back of the property. But we should start to see heavy construction coming soon 
And uh, yeah, it's going to be painful. But did you see that model of what it's going to look like? The guitar tower, they, you know, we've seen concept art for a while and we knew it was going to be tall. But when you see this model, which, by the way, it looks like it's in a grandma's, I don't know, living room or something. It <laughs> uh, it towers over everything. That is an insane looking building. Yeah, it, it was a lot bigger than I thought it would be, you know, than you're visually in, you know, Vegas has a lot of big stuff going on, a lot of things to take your focus. And I think this is going to be maybe the sphere. Here and this are the two things that are really going to draw people's eyes. And I think the sphere, just because of how dynamic it can be, but this thing is going to tower above everything. I, I'm sure the other properties are going to hate it. Yeah, not only that, it's right out on the strip, all the way basically pushing out to the sidewalk. So you can see in this model, the new pool areas that they're going to build for the guitar tower. They're not going to get rid of the other pool areas. They'll have two pool areas, kind of similar to what they did in their Florida property. But the strip views are going to be absolutely out of this world because it is right on the strip looking straight north and south. Pretty amazing there. And then just walking by it. I mean, I've been to the guitar tower in Florida, which is not nearly as tall as this. Uh, uh, but you're going to be walking by this massive structure right on the strip, something we don't see with other properties. And, you know, you can see exactly where the volcano was, exactly how they're going to integrate this in now. Makes sense, but it's still sort of sad. And we don't know. They said in that little corner that right now in this model looks like grass was going to be some sort of a light show, too, down on the ground. So maybe we'll get something over there where would be the corner of where the volcano is now. But man, that thing is going to just tower over everything. It's going to be insane to watch it get built. Yeah, it's going to be cool to watch go up. And then the first time it's lit up is probably going to be a big party down on the strip. And I'm excited to see everything they do. And I'm I'm sure they're going to go balls to the walls on, on the light shows and everything that, that you get to see from it. And then if they're adding another one down on the ground, that's just like over over the top. Well, maybe it'll complement each other. It gives them a little space that's unused there to do something. With that, uh, we don't know. But yeah, as you talk about Florida, I've seen that light show a couple times. It's really amazing. It's a great show, music. And so you're going to have a very lively atmosphere out there. And while the volcano is historic, it's not lively. I wouldn't say that you have this like lively gathering of stuff. So you'll have music and lights and you'll be able to see it from everywhere, it seems like, based on this model. And uh, yeah, you have the blue glass of everything. And uh, this is a new era and it's finally starting didn't you just say on the last show that you never thought it was going to happen? So there you go. Construction starting <laughs> soon. They obviously are responding to your criticism. The reverse jinx worked to, perfe to perfection. So let us know what you guys think about anything we talked about today. This guitar tower, are you excited for it? Do you think it's a monstrosity? I've seen opinions from both sides on that. Uh, love closing. Everything else we discussed today, hit us up in the comments. We do two shows a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. And we'll be back in a couple days with another show. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. Don't take Sean's car with it, okay? Please. Don't cry. <laughs> oh, I forgot about car. <laughs>